In this video, we're going to go through one of our blood flow restriction training recovery protocols that we'll use with athletes after they've thrown a lot, when they're fatigued, when they're a little bit sore. If you haven't seen our last video, we just did a video on blood flow restriction training where we were actually trying to rehabilitate an athlete or show some ways that we would rehabilitate an athlete and Austin was in there as well. In that video, we went through some exercises that would be more for hypertrophy or strengthening, maintaining muscle mass, um, improving muscular performance, things like that. In this video, we're going to go through some ways that you can activate muscles, improve the recovery times of your athletes using a blood flow restriction training device. It's got to be done by someone who's been through a certification, understands what they're doing, and knows how to use the cuffs to maximize athlete's potential. There's people out there that are, that are using them in the gym and they're just cutting off their blood flow at various occlusion pressures. With Austin, we actually found his occlusion pressure. We know what it is. We're being very specific. We're making sure we monitor it and things like that. So each time an athlete comes in, we'll reassess the extremity, see what's at, and then actually set the cuff to the exact amount of occlusion or the exact amount of um, pressure we want it at. So for Austin, on today, we're going to end up going to about 80 millimeters of mercury. Once I get him to 80, I'll have him flex and extend a few times. And I have the cuff proximal on his arm here. Relax. And then I'm going to have to add a little bit more. Get him back up to 80, flex and extend. Relax. Just a little bit more. Flex and extend. Make sure we're at. So that just allows the um, the air to proliferate throughout the cuff. Relax, relax, relax. So there's 78, 80. And there, I'll detach. If at any time I need to, we'll release some air. You know, if it's too much pressure. When you're doing these recovery ones, we're doing lighter activity, we generally go, um, we can generally go a little bit closer to a higher percent occlusion, so a little bit higher pressure inside the cuff. For these exercises today, we're going to give them three different exercises that I want them to do. We're going to do a, just a straight shoulder extension, and we're not going to follow our hypertrophy model of sets and reps. So for this one, Nice athletic stance, split stance. He's gonna come back into extension, palm facing forward, focusing on the position of the shoulder blade. Because we know the cuffs don't just have effects distally where they cut the blood flow off, but they also have effects proximally because blood isn't allowed to travel through its venous flow pattern or the typical pattern that it would follow through the artery to the vein and then back proximally to the heart. So into extension, hold. And also you have to think, if I'm restricting blood flow going distally, the blood isn't going through my proximal arteries because it's getting blocked off. Now some is, because we're not doing 100% occlusion. Right to here, shoulder down and back. So the, the amount of blood to the proximal tissues is reduced as well the amount of blood flow, there's going to be some pooling here because the venous return isn't pushing it back to the heart as quickly. So I'm always focused on scapular position. This is a great exercise for Austin here. Right to here, Austin. So I won't let Austin go back too far, right to there. That's my target, don't go past it, right there. Focus on scapular positioning. Once we get a mild to moderate level of fatigue there, we're gonna have him relax. We'll drop these bands down at any time we can drop to a lower band. We don't wanna in increase the amount of fatigue or the amount of muscular damage that occurs as a result of throwing and exercise training. We're trying to increase the amount of blood in specific tissues, specifically if he had some medial elbow discomfort, things like that after throwing. 
So now here, he's gonna do a forward reach with a serratus push. So he's reaching as far forward as he can with the palm up. And you could just do a straight, you know, protraction, retraction punch. I like this because it can hit some more of the structures in the shoulder as well. And then from there, come get my hand. Come on, come get it. Incorporate a little rotation, maximal protractive reach. Perfect. And I'll give them 12 reps here. Um, this shouldn't be too crazy. I mean, the majority of the effects um, in terms of fatigue are going to happen distally. You will have more early fatigue proximally too. So it's just um, reduced resistance, but it's not going to be as much as say if we were doing a forearm exercise. Perfect. Good. Come on, touch my hand. Touch my hand. So he's maintaining a good thoracic posture, nice lunge stance, a nice, nice protraction and reach. Good. Say so give him give him 12 reps here. Then I'm gonna have him relax and I'll show the last exercise. So I'll just hop over here. So our last exercise. It's just a, a very basic exercise, thumb to the pocket, out to about shoulder height. So I'm in mild internal rotation. I'm gonna be working my posterior delt here some. I'm gonna be working my you know, infra, teres minor, a little bit of supra, a little bit of middle delt. And I'm just taking it through the range of motion with some, some resistance. So from the pocket, kind of on a PNF pattern about halfway with no, you know, external rotation or anything. And you can, you know, manipulate these in any way. This is an example of something we've found to be very successful. Good, and I'm just feeling where he's working hard. Going up on the angle is gonna help take out some of the the lat teres major activity. But I can do a lat teres major exercise as well. Good. And I'll have them do about 12 here. We might go through this twice if if we're, um, you know, going at a really low, really low um, resistance level. And I can even do some um, light passive range of motion manual therapy stuff with the cuff on too. After that, you just get them here, let the pressure out of the cuff. And he'll feel the blood coming back to the arm, rushing in. And there's pooling, you know. He's got some pooling of blood here, which is the effect we wanted. You can see the redness. And that's just after that light application, that tone difference here. So very effective recovery modality for you guys out there dealing with athletes. I know we've, we've had this question before, so I want to answer as many of you guys' questions as possible. So if you do have any, um, Drop them on Twitter, drop them on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, wherever, and hopefully we'll be able to get to them. All right, guys, subscribe, like, we'll see you in the next video.